All right, how are we looking? I think we can probably go ahead and get started at this point. All right, cool. We have a bunch of material today. So hello, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon to those of you who are in Europe. Uh, welcome to Evolve AI's second webinar in our series. We're excited to discuss how Evolve AI helps customers overcome challenges which are common uh, with a traditional approach to testing and optimization. So let's get started. The overarching theme in this webinar is how Evolve addresses traditional testing challenges and how that makes it more than just a simple testing tool. Evolve is really a platform which optimizes customer experiences and does this continuously by generating and testing new experiences in pursuit of finding what works best for your users. So primary testing challenges which Evolve addresses are the complexity of optimizing across a full customer experience, particularly uh, when taking into account multiple stages and elements throughout a customer journey, testing at a large scale, being able to analyze thousands of possible or potential improvements across a complex customer experience, uh, which would traditionally require a large team of strategists, developers, analysts, et cetera. And traditional testing also leans into selecting winners and then iterating, which risks the adoption of false positives and misinterpretation of false negatives. So Evolve addresses all of these challenges and it enables testing across complex user journeys, connecting back to multiple key performance metrics. Um, it allows your teams to test dozens of design changes, which together can generate millions or um, thousands or millions of varying user experiences. And it does this without the need to declare winners um, at set time intervals. Uh, and if that by, by not having these set time intervals and not needing to declare winners, it mitigates the significant risk of potentially adopting false positives. <clears throat> And it does all of this simultaneously uh, uh, as a function of addressing these challenges. It continuously works to generate lift for the metrics that matter most to your business. So before we go deeper into how Evolve addresses those challenges, we wanted to outline the traditional approach to optimization so that we have a baseline to compare with. Testing traditionally follows this stage approach to optimization, identifying issues uh, in the customer experience that impact our business metrics, hypothesizing about ways to address those issues, coming up with ideas to test our hypotheses, running those tests in our digital experiences, analyzing the results and drawing conclusions. And at this point, we take action uh, by ending a test, adopting what's statistically significant, um, and you know, then of course, taking what we've learned and didn't adopt necessarily, and considering the next iteration of testing. So hopefully this all sounds familiar um, because in many ways, it's not that different from the process we had in mind when we were building the Evolve platform, except for one uh, really important way, which is the taking action part. So uh, let's consider a classic example of testing a redesign against your current experience. In this redesign, uh, we might be changing things like offer headline, a hero image, background color, uh, primary call to action. But before we run the test, we need to determine how long it needs to run uh, in order to evaluate the, the results uh, for statistical significance. So to do this, we would need to use minimal detectable effect size or MDE to determine the number of samples we need and ultimately how long it would take to collect those samples. However, the MDE we choose can leave a blind spot for uplifts um, below the chosen effect size. The time we set for our tests can also be costly, uh, especially when the ideas uh, are showing a negative impact on our business metrics. Uh, we have the urge to act. So this is kind of, this slide is leading into the peaking problem, which I think many of you are very familiar with. I like to call it the human element of testing. So um, we need to consider the reality of this design. Uh, the impact of these six changes together looks like negative 5%. You have to be confident in this result and take necessary action, we need to wait to see enough samples. Uh, this highlights another challenge, resisting the urge uh, to evaluate significance before the predetermined time is met. When we frequently peek at the results of our tests before we've collected enough samples, the chance of finding significance increases 
but in doing so, we risk the uh, we risk taking action on a false positive or false negative. So, of all the AI addresses these challenges, waiting to evaluate uh, waiting to evaluate for statistical significance and the peaking problem. And we do this by actually making decisions earlier and with less confidence than traditional A-B testing, but then automatically correcting for misreads in less time. Uh, and that minimizes any negative effect as the AI learns which ideas work best for your audience. And this methodology we call continuous optimization. So let's compare how we might expect to test this redesign using continuous optimization. First, uh, we start by testing each distinct area, or sorry, each distinct idea <laughs> um, by itself against the current control experience in isolation. Uh, at the start, the cumulative performance of these ideas can look a lot like an A-B test uh, once a baseline is established for, for the individual idea. So once that baseline is established, the system begins to search for the true performance of each idea, retesting them over and over again. Um, and it does this by combining them with other ideas and creating new experiences. Evolves predictive algorithms, leverage the learnings from each test as it narrows in on ideas that are, achieving, uh, that are actually achieving and driving real uplift. So this graphic you can see as, it, as we're moving through time here uh, is, is uh, discovering more and more, uncovering what's really driving what. Um, and as we're doing this, the AI drives more traffic to the good ideas by including them in more experiences. Uh, similarly, ideas that are driving down performance uh, will be seen less and less by your audience. Uh, the system automatically starts to uh, exclude them from experiences. Uh, so looking back at the A-B test, we can see how continuous optimization finds good ideas and then automatically exploits them so you don't have to. Does anyone have any questions at this point? All right. Um, oh, go ahead. Thought I heard something. All right, I'll keep on keep on trucking here. All right, so now let's think about the challenges of traditional testing and what scaling them to the full breadth of your customer experience would be like. The time and the human effort to run dozens of tests across your customer journey uh, or you know, any customer journey can be insurmountable for many businesses. And then factoring in the vast number of possible experiences that you could create from all the different ideas that you have. Uh, and thinking now, okay, what would it take to analyze the data generated from all of those tests, let alone then act on them? Evolve takes on the burden of this complexity with AI. Evolve's AI can find signals in the noise uh, and capitalize on the ideas that show promise. As we saw earlier, the AI efficiently uses traffic by making more decisions with less confidence and auto-correcting to minimize downside. So hopefully you're beginning to see here how continuous optimization makes Evolve AI more than a testing tool and instead more of an integral part of your digital experience by automatically delivering your best ideas packaged as groups of experiences to more of your visitors so that you don't have to. Evolve's technology and strategies are designed so that you don't have to make a decision to adopt an idea and risk finding out later that it was a false positive. <clears throat> that said, we understand that the reality that many teams face uh, is pressure to pick winners and adopt them in their digital experience. So we wanted to discuss next what it is, uh, what, what the best steps are uh, to select uh, a winner, if you must. Uh, and the strategies that you can follow to do that. So what if I want to pick a winner? First off, assessing the performance and exposure of your ideas to find what's driving the most impact for your audience. Next, uh, to reduce the risk of false positives, you want to revalidate 
uh, your selection and validate your winner. And finally, if the validation is successful and conclusive, you want to go ahead and adopt it. So uh, we've laid out here what um, each of those steps are like. So assessing individual ideas. Um, when assessing the success of an individual idea, there are a couple indicators in your project um, variant report that can help you identify a real winner. First, the expected performance or credible interval at 95% uh, confidence is fully above control. Um, this means the impact on your baseline conversion rate is very nearly always a positive one from that variant. Second, if the system has exposed the idea to more traffic than others, uh, that's a good indication of its performance. Uh, the AI is going to, as we talked about, uh, do its best to show things that are successful to more um, and more users. So um, it gets a consistent benefit uh, over the control experience. So besides looking at individual variant performance, there's also assessing the uh, combinations. So as the system searches for the true performance of individual ideas, it continually retests them in new experiences combined with other ideas. The performance of these new experiences or combinations gives us clues as to which ideas are driving the uplift in your digital experience. For example, if we look at the top graph uh, showing performance of eight different combinations, we see the expected performance of the combination on the far right is completely above control. When we look at the individual ideas or variants inside that combination, we see that the orange variant, CTA text, uh, is uh, CTA text is secure tech, uh, checkout, is also completely above control. The variant performance shown here represents its independent performance, which is inferred from the performance of all the combinations that it's appeared in. Uh, we also see that the orange secure checkout variant exists in other combinations with high performance. And as we discussed previously, the number of active combinations a variant appears in, or its probability to be seen, is another indicator of success. So from this data, we can hypothesize that this variant is driving the uplift in this and other combinations. Similarly, the variants with more negative uh, expected performance uh, can drive down, uh, sorry, uh, the variants that can drive down performance uh, are also represented through this mix. And you can see where they're appearing. And uh, even when mixed with some of the better performers, how those other variants are drawing down performance. So validating your pick. As we touched on earlier, if you want to do your best to reduce the risk of selecting a false positive when picking a winner, um, if you're running an A-B test using Evolve, you can simply restart the test with your winning idea and wait to evaluate the result for significance. But if you're using continuous optimization, you don't have to stop other tests. Our most common approach to this is requesting the creation of a custom combination that includes only your winning variant or idea uh, and testing that again in isolation. Um, alternatively, Evolve also has a comparison feature, which allows you to compare one or more selected combinations in an ABN test format. Uh, but it's important to note that when using the comparison feature, uh, that does require ultimately stopping that project and starting over in a new version. Are there any questions about either of these approaches to validating the selected winner? Okay, well, so if you have a uh, if you have a winner, yeah, and you want to adopt it, you yes. know, does it does it make sense to then just kind of remove that uh, variant, or you know, I guess as part of the the project, does it make sense to just keep having the same variants live until the end of time? That way, you kind of have a you know a score or a true measure of what your impact was at the end. Uh, let me know if that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah. Th does I, think, it, I think I understand uh, what you're saying. It, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I think this is something we've talked about actually a, a bit as well. It, it kind of, it's it, it depends a bit, right? So you really want to make sure that you have gotten as close to the true value of your you know selected winner as possible. 
um, if it has really run for a good period of time and it's really demonstrating success, um, adopting it uh, and leaving the experiment that you have on running and simply disabling that idea inside of that experiment is something you can do and then um, see if the, you know, the, the expectation then would be that the AI would adjust um, to the new control um, and that, uh, you know, it would, you would just be keeping, you know, adding other new ideas and so on and so forth, but you would disable it from that, you would adopt it to control and let the project keep on running. And that would, you know, keep a, you know, a score, right? It would keep your relative realized metric going from the beginning that you started that project all the way through the end. Uh, if it's a really big change um, or something, you know, significant enough, like on a PDP or like a really, you know, a crucial part of your user experience, um, it can make sense to end the current version that you're in, you know, count the chips that you've stacked uh, and start a new version of that so that you're giving um, a fresh slate to the other ideas that are in your test and the ones that are coming in after that to compare them to the new version of control that adopted that winner. Um, but you can kind of, you can take it, it again, it, it depends a little bit, um, but uh, you can take either approach sort of depending on how big of a change uh, you're adopting um, and also, you know, the, how large your project is, you know, if it's on a single page, if it's uh, across uh, multiple contexts, multiple pages in your experience, uh, et cetera. So those can all have an impact on your decision making. Does that answer the question? Yeah, certainly. Uh, a couple of ways to think about it. So um, I guess it's pretty situational, like like what you said. Yeah. Um, I mean, the bottom line is you, you can adopt, you know, like if that's something you need to do uh, or something that you want to do, right. Um, in order to report that you had a winner, you did this, you know, et cetera, you can, you can definitely do that. And then what tactically is going to make the most sense to continue the project from there is, as you said, uh, you know, conditional to an extent. Cool. Thanks. You got it. Any other questions? We can jump back to other slides and stuff as well, um, you know, things about peaking or anything like that. Um, I think that we actually ended up moving through this a lot faster than I thought that we would. Uh, we have another section here to get into as well, um, or slide rather. So talking about adoption, um, I think this is actually, you got ahead of, I got ahead of us here a little bit. Uh, the next steps uh, depend on your organization, um, but generally speaking, uh, your engineering team will add implementing the winner to their dev queue. Um, if the timeline to adopt is longer than uh, you would like from your dev team, uh, Evolve can actually help support uh, soft coding as a temporary solution. Uh, but once the idea is adopted, uh, it does need to be disabled in the active project, as we were just saying, uh, so that it's excluded from that project. Uh, and then over time, the system can either uh, recalibrate and adjust um, if you leave the project running, or you can start a new version of your project. So I think this is our concluding slide. Um, evolve AI's methodology of continuous optimization and the tactics uh, which make that approach possible. The ongoing revalidation of individual ideas uh, which mitigates the challenge of traditional testing, uh, continually adapting um, to performance signals to find which ideas work best for your users in real time. Um, all of these things make Evolve a powerful part of your digital experience. I think that concludes the slides that we have. Is there anything anyone would like to jump back to? Let me go back to the very beginning here. Anything about any of these ideas that anyone would like to discuss?
Nothing from, from my side here, Will. Thanks for running through all this. In fact, I, I think this is uh, a good deck to actually circulate internally as we adopt Evolve as a tool and kind of share the ways of working. Absolutely, great. Yeah, um, Melissa will follow up with this. I think we'll also probably um, aim to get this uh, recording onto our our YouTube channel so that people can uh, watch uh, the presentation again as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that uh, it was helpful. Yes, I'll send around the deck and the recording to everyone who registered for the event, since there are, you know, always folks that register but don't wind up able to make it so they can catch up. And then this will also wind up on our YouTube channel, courtesy of our marketing friends. Uh, we've got a little over four minutes remaining for any Q&A, so if you have any questions at all, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. We've got a few experts on the call as well. <laughs> so if anyone has any mathy questions, uh, feel free to ask them. A good point, Jonathan, in the uh, chat reminder of our office hours tomorrow oh yes thank you thanks elise and jonathan uh, we have office hours tomorrow uh, so that folks can join and ask any questions about this presentation today or any questions about anything uh, and we'll have dev support on there to help answer questions if they're technical um, so please come on down and uh, ask any questions share any challenges that you've been having and we'll do our best to um, work on those with you. Awesome. Thanks, well, if there are no questions, we can probably wrap up and hopefully we will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. PST for our office hours. Excellent. Thank you, Thank everyone. you everyone.